All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about some additional tools and utilities uh, that you can use for actually looking at Windows event logs. Um, one of my favorite new tools is Deep Blue CLI, and this is by uh, Eric Conrad, and he released it at DerbyCon, and he just recently released an update to Deep Blue CLI. Um, and I'll talk about the update in the lower right-hand corner here in just a second. So in the past, whenever I've talked about Deep Blue CLI, it looks at a number of different attributes in the command line um, and also in PowerShell that'll give you an indication that some kind of shenanigans are running, right? So if we look here, we've got suspicious command line, it's event ID 4688. And yeah, that, that command line is, is bad, right? So it has a number of different base 64 characters that might be some type of encoding that's being utilized, right? And you can see here cmd.exe is channelizing and starting um, PowerShell, and then that's invoking, invoking the uh, base 64 encoded data. Whereas we drop down a little bit lower on the left-hand side, you can see Metasploit style base 64 encoding compressed PowerShell function, possible use of Metasploit. Once again, it's looking for that encoding on the PowerShell command. Once again, super cool to be able to pull that off. Now, I had mentioned in one of our previous webcasts that Eric Conrad had added in some new features into Deep Blue CLI. One of the things that uh, Jordan had talked about is, you know, the ability to look at net user space forward slash domain because net user space forward slash domain is oftentimes an opening gambit of an attacker to dump all of the users and then do something like a password spray or taking an existing account and then trying to log on to multiple different computer systems. So one of the things that uh, he added into Deep Blue CLI was the ability to do a quick audit of how many systems an individual account was actually authenticated or had authenticated or attempted to authenticate to. Um, over on the right-hand side, you can see that we have multiple admin logins for one account. You can see the it.admin account um, is logging into 314 instances. That's generally bad. Um, but then again, sometimes it may not be bad. So down below that, you can see lab v2 domain controller one. That particular account has logged into uh, 2, 22,451 instances as well. The really interesting one is dealing with Bertha Schultz. Uh, this was actually one of our accounts that we did uh, password spray and one of our attacks with. And in this particular account, she had actually logged into 75 systems, right? So this will actually break down your top talkers. Who are the user accounts that are actually logging into multiple systems? Some of it you would totally expect to be a normal that's running on a system, right? If we're looking at the domain controllers, give me a second. That is a very cool tool, by the way. Children, children, go away. So. Some of these things, like the IT admin account, you would expect that to possibly be logged in, or the DC1 account, you would expect that to be logged in. But once you see individual named accounts attempting to access multiple different computer systems at the exact same time, that means that we've got to dig deeper. So for digging deeper, I wanted to show you what that would look like um, in PowerShell. So I wrote up just a wonderful little script here, git win event, um, you can provide a filter hash table. And filter hash tables will allow you to identify things like paths, specific event IDs, specific users that you want to look at, um, and pulling that information out. Um, now, the reason why I used git win event for this specific example is git win event works against files. So I can take the security EVTX file off of a domain controller. And in this particular situation, I pulled the one where the Bertha account was actually doing uh, Bloodhound. And actually, it might have been password spraying. I can't remember. I think it was actually Bloodhound. This was Bloodhound. That's right. So with the Bertha Schultz account, right, she was logging into multiple systems. We have Deep Blue CLI telling us that she's logging into multiple computer systems. And we can actually pull out additional details for each one of those authentication attempts that exist. So we do get when event, filter hash table. We give it a path, and we get tools, Deep Blue CLI, master, Deep Blue CLI, webcast, security.evtx specifically focusing in on the ID equal to 4672. And then we pipe it through another command. We say where object, the property, message matches Bertha.Schultz. So now we can see that specific event ID for that specific user logging into all of these different computer systems. And once again, you can use get event log on local systems and remote systems for doing live analysis. So some cool things that you can get out of event logs. And this is useful if you have a potential compromise on a remote location. You could say, I oh, will dump all of your security event logs, send them to me. Then I can do some analysis with tools like Deep Blue CLI. I can do some additional analysis with Git win event 
and so on. Whereas if you're doing it live, use git event logon instead. Also some additional tools that are great if you have proper logging enabled would be tools like logon tracer. Once again, I've talked about this tool from JP cert quite a bit. So a couple of problems about these. So logon tracer and using get win event and using deep blue CLI can take a long time to actually kick out data that's meaningful. It's perfectly fine if you're trying to do a hunt team, it's perfectly fine. If you're part of a forensics investigation, you're answering questions from executives like, is the SVC white noise account being utilized on any other systems? Do we see Bertha's account being used in other systems? Great for answering those point solutions. None of these things that we've talked about are actually things that can be instrumented as part of your security operation cycle. You're not gonna have full SIM, you're not gonna have full user behavioral analytics, and we'll talk more about that whenever we get into Sysmon and the ELK stack implementation for looking at event logs. Uh, especially from Sysmon and getting some more details from these things. But they are great for tactical level analysis in your environment. It's also really useful when you're going back to what we discussed at the beginning with the MITRE ATT&CK techniques matrix. When you're going through and doing analysis and you're generating a gap analysis in your environment, you're saying, here's what we can detect, here's what we cannot detect, it is extremely useful to sit down with management, sit down with other administrators and say, look, we can detect this. We can do better. Here's a tool that does this in Deep Blue CLI. Here's a little command that I can run on PowerShell that'll be able to pull this stuff up. Here's Logon Tracer. These are not enterprise grade alerting, but it at least shows that it's possible. And it'll also give you an idea of what you can do whenever you have proper logging and alerting enabled on your systems. Hold on. This brings up another interesting point, John. How much money have we spent so far? Right now, we've spent no money whatsoever, even though my son is trying to get my wallet. Um, from me. <laughs> so, so go away. Oh, so this is what I get for doing this kind of around lunch, right? Everyone starts getting hungry. So, so far, we've spent no money, and it's great for, once again, going to your executives and saying, hey, we need funding. And here's how we can actually get when we have that proper funding to stop these particular gaps that exist in our organization. Mm -hmm.